Hey there, Kiwask Masters. Um, it is Sunday the 23rd. I'm going to be recording our team meeting here. So um, going a little bit of a different route. Going to put it on your guys' shoulders to watch this. Make sure you do watch the entire thing. Um, so my name is Coach Rhodes. I'm the head varsity coach. Um, I have, I guess, a lot of background in wrestling. I, I don't know if you guys uh, – want to know much about it, but I, I do really, uh, really cherish wrestling. I know a lot about it. Um, I do value myself in being a, a technician. Um, any techniques that continue to evolve in this sport, I'm really on top of it. I'm studying wrestling all the time. When I watch NCAA and world team level wrestling, I'm watching it uh, through a lens of like trying to see what's new, trying to look what's happening out there. If there's some techniques that seem to be evolving or changing, I'm definitely on top of that. I'm a two-time state champion uh, for Kewaskum. I did get recruited to Madison, uh, so I was a Badger wrestler for um, a semester. I transferred out for numerous reasons. You can ask me about it sometime if you want. I uh, transferred to UW Oshkosh for a teaching degree so that I could get into teaching and coaching uh, post-college. Um, I did assist uh, UW Oshkosh. Uh, I was assistant coach for two years there, was in charge of their recruiting, um, was in charge of a lot of their um, technique and practice. So lots of background. Some other coaches you guys are going to see. Uh, coach Watsik is our main assistant. Uh, another assistant that you'll see is Mark uh, Dayhek, Coach Dayhek. Um, you'll also see Coach Philibeck. Um, you guys will get to meet him. He's going to be, he's a was a heavyweight wrestler for Freedom. He was on their team uh, in one of their team state championships um, a few years back. And uh, he's going to be great. We have Coach uh, Joey Seitz volunteering, and we have Coach Joey uh, Widmeyer or Mr. Widmeyer from the language arts department in the high school. They will all be helping us out. Um, all I ask, I guess, with all of those, those adults in the room, just know that it is not any of their jobs to take care of any issues that are on our team. If uh, you guys have something that went wrong or something you don't like or um, something that is going wrong, make sure that you keep your lines of communication open with me. I should be the one that you are talking about with that so we can solve it through our whole program and through our whole team. Um, it's not really appropriate to ask the other coaches. We have our assistants. Um, about problems you might be having within our team because it's not their job to take care of that stuff. So make sure you're talking to me as much as you can with any thoughts, ideas, or concerns you might have. All right, I'm going to take myself off the screen so that we can maneuver this slideshow a little bit better, and we're going to fly through this as well. Um, let's see. All right. So first off, practices. Um, on a normal day, you guys are getting out uh, five minutes earlier this year, so 2.45. Uh, we're still going to start at 3 p.m., but um, it would be important that we are all upstairs and like really ready to go a few minutes early. Don't try to just roam up into the room at 3 p.m. and then act like it's okay that you're still tying your shoes um, or finding your shoes or uh, whatever it might be. Like we are, we are definitely breaking it down and rolling. Uh, at the dot of three o'clock. So if you're roaming in the room at that moment, we're considering that late. Um, I don't know, repetitive uh, tardies, so to speak, if we want to call it that, will uh, will lead to some consequences. So make sure that we are on time. 2.57 at the minimum, totally ready to go on our feet, bringing it in uh, so that by three we're actually jogging. If you need Emily for any situations, um, I don't know if you guys might get taped up, uh, which isn't too common in wrestling, but maybe your ankles, etc. if you have a bad one or an injury that needs to be rehabbed a little bit before practice, make sure you're in there right at 245, not messing around. Um, we cannot stroll into practice a half hour late and say, oh, I was down by Emily for a half hour. Like, that's way too long. That would actually be 45 minutes. If it was 245 and you rolled in at 330, that's... Um, not going to be acceptable. So get into Emily, and, you know, in a lot of cases, she's still going to try to spit you out and get you into practice by 3 o'clock. Most practices will be 3 to 5 p.m. Um, in the beginning of the season, we're going to be doing some other things, you know, some additional weightlifting, 
Uh, we might be going on some runs depending on the weather. I want to get outside in the beginning of this season. Uh, so make sure you have tennis shoes. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. Um, so those practices might stretch out a little bit. I'll, you know, definitely let you guys know ahead of time what those practices are going to be. We will have a calendar that I'm going to get on the Google Classroom. So you guys will see everything you need to see beforehand um, and know what our times are, if it's going to be later or not. But once we get into the flow of the season, we will be done most days by five o'clock. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So uh, headgear, I guess, I think, oh boy, sorry, this is going a little crazy. Um, come on, man. All right. So I think I have a little bit of a list later on, but... Um, Headgear, we're going to apply, uh, this is actually a little wrong on this slide, sorry, I thought I changed it, but for live wrestling, definitely we're going to have headgear on. Um, I'm not going to push it very hard in much other things, um, but it is a safety tool, that's what headgear is for, but we'll definitely have it on for live wrestling, so make sure you guys have your headgear there. Um, no cell phones in practice, I, I'll kind of get into this a little bit more as we move along here. Um Okay, so <clears throat> swear I can cover that a little bit more in depth. Uh, okay, so we actually have wrestling room rules that I put together this year. I want to make sure that we are, I don't know, a lot of this stuff is common sense, I should say, but uh, surprisingly enough, um, I think these need to be made into more strict rules this year. Um, we are going to have strict expectations in our success. So we're gonna to have to have some strict rules in our room as well. So let's go down this list. Uh, number one, uh, respect the room. Make sure we take care of it, make sure we clean it up. That's obvious, but we tend to have a lot of bottles laying around and stuff like that. Um, enter the room mentally prepared to hustle and start to finish, okay? Um, and mental preparation, like I've talked about this a lot in previous years. We're gonna talk about it a lot this year. When we're coming upstairs to our wrestling room, like we we need to be getting focused on what's about to happen. You know, um, we have two hours out of your day that you need to commit to learning wrestling, uh, taking ownership in your wrestling, taking ownership in your technique, what you need to learn next, all of that. Like that's mental preparation. Um, getting yourself ramped up and amped up to like have a hustle. You know what I mean? Um, I personally get really pumped up for wrestling practices because it's like that next chance to to bust it and, and to really improve. So mental preparation is really important. Um, something I want to talk more about this year is to come upstairs to stay. That means be prepared when you come up there and don't leave practice. Okay, we have a lot of people and typically the same individuals abusing that. They leave practice every single day need to go to the bathroom or we get a water drink and they disappear. They head downstairs without even asking and they're gone um, for 10, 15 minutes. So totally unacceptable. Uh, I'm going to have you guys try to um, stay in the room, right? So if we're asking to go to the bathroom, like we're going to really hound you about why that's the case. You know, we really shouldn't have to be prepared. Um, you have that 15 minute window after school, like go to the bathroom be really ready for practice. We should not be leaving. Okay. Um, I have some absolute no notes here. Okay. No laying down. There's no reason for it. When we come up to practice this is another thing in connection to mental preparation. When you have the same group of individuals that come up to practice and they get their shoes half on and they just want to lay in a corner, like it's nap time. Like you're obviously not mentally prepared for practice. So let's, not lay down. If you're getting on one of the rollers and kind of rolling yourself out, um, that is different. That's not laying down. That is stretching. That is getting ready for practice. No cell phones, um, no laziness. You know, that's another thing that we need to tap into our mental preparation to practice. Um, why are you there? You know, uh, we need to be there for the team this year. We're going to talk about our team goals. Um, which is, by the way, to win a conference title. That is something we should be able to do this year. But if we have any individuals who are consistently just lazy, 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 lazy every single day, you're going to hurt our team. 
you are not going to perform when we need you to perform at the conference tournament or in our duels. Um, we need every single person on our varsity lineup, especially, to be at their best. So we can't have anybody giving us 50% in practice, you know. So we are focusing more on our team goals this year. If we do that, I believe it should be more motivational for you um, to work as hard as you can because you're not just working for yourself. You're not just hurting yourself if you want to be lazy. You will be hurting the entire team. So through our captains and through our coaches, um, I wish, I am wishing and hoping for a year where we finally have a squad of individuals who are not lazy. They know how to show up and work, okay? Uh, no climbing on mats, no sitting or laying on the crash mats. I want us to stay off the crash mats all the time. I don't want anyone to touch them, you know, unless we are climbing a rope or unless we are practicing throws. Stay the heck off the crash mats again. If you're mentally prepared for practice, we do not need to lay around. We do not need to slump down into the crash mats. That's not being prepared, okay? Uh, another rule, we're going to take breaks as a team. We get water as a team. We're going to sharpen that up a little this year. Do not just roam by yourself away from drilling and get a drink, okay? Um, do not get a drink in the middle of our workouts. I will make it very clear when our breaks are going to be. Um, so you will have to make it to those breaks. We're going to do it as a team. Okay. Sometimes that's going to be uncomfortable or you might get a dry mouth or whatever it might be, but we need to persevere. We're going to get through that. It's not that big of a deal. You will get water when you need water. Okay. Um, and then I think what it says underneath this is that headgear. So headgear for live wrestling. Um, definitely anytime I'm going to call live wrestling, um, we need headgear on. Okay, that might be a little different than spar. If we're doing light spar, that's different. Live wrestling is live wrestling. Uh, weightlifting and additional workouts. Ultimately, what this slide is telling us is like uh, you you need to do more, right? We will do as much as we can as a team, but it's not going to be enough uh, for you guys to succeed. If we have anybody that wants to succeed at a high level or really improve this year or help the team out, um, you you need to be doing more okay um that could be our 6 a.m that could be going on runs when you have time you know later in the evening or on sundays um our practices are just not going to cut it to keep up with the um the top tier athletes that can make it through a, a full wrestling match and you know won't be breathing very hard and definitely won't be gasping for air and their muscles won't be shutting down because they've done what they need to do to be in shape. So pay attention to some of the top tier wrestlers on our team. Um, they don't get tired. Um, that's because they're doing a lot on the side more than just our wrestling practices. So that's just kind of a beast of the sport, not just for wrestling, but ultimately like for anything else, like if you, you guys really want to be phenomenal football players, like you, you got to be doing more than just the football practices. That's not enough. For you to be um, top tier athletes. All right. Injuries. Number one rule for injuries do not disappear from our team because you're injured. Okay. That tends to be kind of a younger athlete mentality. You know, if you haven't been in high school sports yet and you're like, oh man, I hurt my shoulder, I'm going to go home for the next two weeks until my shoulder is okay. That's not how it works in high school varsity sports, okay? Um, basically, it's this. If, if our team is practicing for two hours, you need to be training for two hours with an injury, okay? Training with an injury is perfectly okay. Um, you need to be smart about it. You need to communicate with Emily, communicate with me. We tend to set up workouts that work around that injury. So like if you got a lower body injury, we're going to be giving you everything you can do for your upper half. You know, if you have a shoulder injury, uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, leg and cardio type stuff then. You know, that is possible even with an injury. Um, we have a lot of options for workouts. Basically, the goal is to stay in shape, even if you're injured, because by the time you come back and you're cleared from that injury, it's it's go time. You gotta be able to go right back into the game and um, and keep up 
Okay. So, you know, make sure you're communicating. Uh, that's going to be one thing that's on the slide too, is uh, you, you have to talk to me. You have to talk to Emily. If you have an injury, the worst case scenario is that you go to a, a doctor or maybe you went to tell your parents and we didn't even know and we weren't able to communicate with your parents about serious injuries and some parents get really upset about that and then they come you know they call me yelling through the phone you know why didn't you tell us about this and a lot of the cases are like we didn't even know you know the kid didn't even tell us and that's a serious problem in communication so make sure uh, you're seeing uh, myself and emily um you really should not just be ghosting or skipping us and, and going straight to the doctor, right? So you should definitely be seeing Emily. That's her job. Um, it's my job to know about it. So make sure you chat with us uh, as soon as anything's going wrong. Um, okay, so one of my biggest uh, injury stories, I guess, is <clears throat> I uh, got my neck hurt really bad. Um, <clears throat> I was a junior and uh, we wrestled camel sport. We really needed to win that duel. That was going to be our conference championship duel. Um, and I chose to go from 145 up to 152. I, I moved up a weight class to wrestle Justin Schmidt. He was a three-time state champion for camel sport. He was really good. And he did what we know as that camel sport stack. I mean, you varsity wrestlers know what I'm talking about. Dylan hits it all the time, just bending that head underneath their um chest basically and i fought out of it he didn't pin me but fighting out of it crunched all of these muscles and, and vertebrae in my neck um i couldn't move my head for two weeks so for two weeks i hit you know exactly what i'm talking about i hit stairs i hit bike i did uh rope climbs push-ups pull-ups you know trx bands um weight lifting um, i mean when when I got back to being able to drill and wrestle, like I might have actually been in better shape than I was because I was uh, I was working out so hard, um, you know, even without being able to drill, I was getting a really good workout in every single day. Um, you know, again, that's that was totally my mentality. I would never take any minute off from practice, even if I was really hurt because I had really big goals in mind for our team. Um, and I had really big individual goals as well. Um, so you got to think of all of our goals, you know, especially those team goals when you want to just um, maybe sit out. And uh, that should motivate you to not just sit out. Okay. So communication, more about it, you know, missing practice or being sick or not being at school. Um, please make sure you guys let me know that. Okay, as much as you need to let the school know you're not there. Um, I don't know the KHS attendance. Okay, none of us do. So, you know, trying to start a practice, having four wrestlers gone. And if I didn't hear anything from those wrestlers, that's, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's where it gets really tough. So now I need to figure out, okay, where, where were they? Were they at school that day? Were they not at school that day? You know, um, I have to start the beginning of practice getting on my computer, trying to look up Skyward, um, trying to call parents, um, and I do all of that. I, I really need to figure out exactly where every wrestler is every day because you're supposed to be at practice, and if you're not, we need to know where you are, and your parents need to know where you are. So I got to fill in that triangle of communication to make sure everybody actually knows where you are and what you're doing at that time. Um, mostly because we every year have some wrestlers that just um, or athletes that choose to just not show up and they want to go somewhere else for two hours and their parents don't even know about that right they thought they were at practice they weren't at practice um, and that again can get me in trouble as a coach um, so you guys can have my phone number it's right here um, I remind message you guys you should be able to text through remind as well if you want to do that um, i need to know if you're not at school or if you are leaving after school or you know if you're not going to be walking through the door at practice at 255 you know i need to know about it mm -hmm. so that i can clear up attendance every single day okay 
So more about attendance. Let's just make sure that we are attending. We should have a really high attendance rate and a very low missing rate. Okay. Um, I mean, ultimately it can start to affect your participation, especially for varsity. If you have a lot of different reasons to not be there, then, you know, that's going to start making your coaches think that you're not fully committed. And then we're questioning, you know, why you might have a varsity spot. Um, you know, even if we didn't have somebody to fill in, you still have to be earning a varsity position. You know, if there's no competition on our team for that spot, um, I would really hate to say this, but we've done it before. If somebody was missing practice and missing practice and thought they just had a free varsity spot, um, we sat them and they hurt the team because then we took a forfeit. You know, that's the worst case scenario, but it will happen if we see a lack of commitment or a lack of effort at practice or that laziness we're talking about. Um, you know, that is your decision to be that way and to not give us everything you have and to give your team everything you have. So then maybe we forfeit that weight class and it really hurts our team and we don't want a duel because of it. And those are all things we need to consider. We're here for the team. Um, that would be very tragic but we have been there before. It's not, would not be new. Okay. So attendance is really important. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're communicating. Um, tournament attendance. Okay. Um, the expectation is going to rise for varsity. Okay. Um, in past years, I've said like, oh, you know, all tournaments are kind of optional. And some people would really not want to spend their Saturdays at tournaments, but we are raising the bar. Our team is improving. We have higher quality athletes on our wrestling team right now, and we want to win as a team. So that actually involves our team scores at varsity tournaments this year. I want to be flaunting our team scores. I want to be beating other teams at individual tournaments. Okay. So when you're a scoring wrestler at tournaments and you're racking up pins and getting bonus points and so on, those are calculated as team scores through the tournament and i want us to be in the top um, again we are laying down some serious team goals hopefully seeing that the motivation comes into our practices that everybody is considering those team goals even working hard as an individual to help us out um, jv wrestlers it's a little bit different things are a little more optional you know, not all brand new wrestlers are ready to spend Saturdays right away. So we get that. So there's a big difference between how high the expectation is for varsity wrestlers versus the expectation for JV wrestlers. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so our weigh-ins and weight management, let's just review some of these things. We do have skin checks um, and, and weigh-ins that take place at every event. So our weight classes... 106 all the way through 285. They're listed there. There's 14 weight classes. Uh, we're going to try to figure out where everybody belongs. Um, yeah, this is kind of basic info for you um, knowledgeable wrestlers. But um, again, I thought this was common sense. I did have some varsity wrestlers not really understand weigh-ins before. So kind of interesting. Um, so if you are wrestling at 138, you cannot be... 138.1 okay you actually have to be 138.0 or under you can be 137 you can be 135 but you cannot be 138.1 so the scales we use do calculate to the 10th if you are a 10th over um you are now a 145 pounder so just keep that in mind we have to be really careful what we are actually taking in to our bodies like eating and drinking as we're leading up to a weigh-in because a water bottle weighs like a pound and a half. So if you drink a water bottle within an hour of weigh-ins, like you're going to gain that pound and a half. So we got to be really careful about that. Okay. We ultimately do not encourage uh, weight loss on this team. So like trying to suck down to, you know, three or four weight classes like we've seen in the past, um, not really encouraging that anymore. So unless <clears throat> you know, you want to commit to this weight class for our team. Like we have an empty weight class sometimes, and then we have people that are just above it. We're like, hey, you know, we could fill this varsity position if you want. 
it's going to be definitely an if you want situation. And then you can take that on if you want to do it. And we'll communicate with your parents about losing weight. So if you do want to lose weight, here's the WIA rule right now. It's 1.5% of weight loss per week. And we need to be able to calculate that. I think that's on this slide. So <clears throat> hopefully you know how to calculate percentages. As well, you can ask me. I can print off your weight plan on track wrestling. Um, I can print it out. We'll hang it on the wall for you. You can see exactly what weight you need to be each week um, or each day even to follow your weight loss plan. But here's an example. So if I'm 200 pounds and I want to lose weight, so 1.5% is 0 0.015 in the calculator. So 200 times 0 0.015 equals 3 pounds. And then divide that by 7 to figure out how much weight that is per day. So I can lose about 0.4 a day. Okay. Um, if I weighed in to wrestle camel sport on Tuesday, weighing 201.3, um, and I wrestled 220 pounds that day, I can drop to 195 for the tournament, or can I drop to 195 for the tournament on, on Saturday? Um, and the answer there should be no, I'm not gonna be able to lose enough weight following my daily plan, because um, it's only 0.4 or something a day. I would not get down to 195, okay? Um, <clears throat> So it actually shows down below. That's what's sort of getting blocked here. Is I would, at minimum, be 199.6 on Saturday following that plan. Okay. Um, additional pounds. So every Christmas, everybody's weight classes go up two pounds, and it stays there until February 11th. It goes up one more pound. So on February 11th, uh, weight class 113 would actually be 116. So that is at the regional tournament. So starting at regionals, everybody gets another pound. We'll get notified for tournaments. So if a team has a, an event on a Friday, we're wrestling on a Saturday, then the whole tournament gets an additional pound that Saturday, uh, which is pretty common. That happens a lot. So we'll let you guys know ahead of time. Uh, we do have one week that is kind of hectic. So we have January 17th is a Tuesday. We have a duel. The Thursday, we have a duel, that's the 19th, and then on the 20th, we go to a homestead tournament on a Friday. So that's some a totally new tournament in our schedule. We're wrestling on a Friday night instead of a Saturday. So that's a lot of weigh-ins. Uh, you will get an additional pound on that Friday because we are wrestling Thursday night, okay? Multi-day tournaments like the Oshkosh on the water tournament or the state tournament, you get an additional pound each day. Um, so the first day is regular weight classes. The next day is all plus one pound. That follows the multi-day weigh-in. All right. <clears throat> We're aimed at some hydration tests here, um, hydration and skin fold tests, which is, again, a required test we need to take before every season. So the week before the season, um, we're looking to run some tests for people that are available. So, you know, kind of depends on what the other sports are still doing. If we're still in the postseason for football, this might be kind of tough for us. But um, November 7th, that's a Monday. The 9th is a Wednesday. The 11th is a Friday. Um, we hopefully that week before the season starts, because the season starts on the 14th. Um, we're hoping to have a lot of our tests done by then. You know, maybe everybody tests by the 11th and we don't have to mess with our regular practices on, you know, the 14th and 16th. So these all have to be two days apart. You need uh, 48 hours between each test. So they need to be two days apart. That's a rule. Um, but to start out, you know, under mild supervision, we go into the um, the referee's locker room, which is over by the bubbler in the field house. There's a gray door. Um, that's a small locker room in there. We line up there. Emily gives you a cup. There is a, um, a toilet in there and a stall. The door stays, you know, half open. I sit outside of it. Um, I, you know, nobody really just like analyzes you trying to take a pee. So if you're stressed out about that, um, don't be, um, I'm mostly talking with Emily, having conversations with the kids in line. Like I'm not overly inspecting you taking a pee, but you do need to pee into a cup and bring it back out. Um, Emily does not have view of you. She stays around the corner, um, but then she does test your cup. 
there's just a dipping stick that she puts in there and it has to prove that you are hydrated, okay? Um, really to be hydrated is a lot harder than you guys think. Like you need to drink water for days and days and days to be hydrated. Um, do not try to just pound water that day because you're going to gain a lot of weight and that's going to mess with your test. It needs to be a consistent intake of water for multiple days trying to keep your pea color light through that progress. Um, you need to be thinking about a way ahead of time. We can't have caffeine. You can't have coffee. You can't have energy drinks. Like you can't overdo it with salt and sugar. Like all of those things start to force water out of your body if you have too much of it. Um, caffeine, even just a little bit of it on the day of the test will ruin the hydration test. Um, caffeine dehydrates you heavily. So be smart about that. After passing the hydration, then we get uh, what's called the skin fold pinch test. Um, a little measuring tool like this. Um, don't worry, it doesn't hurt. You know, everybody thinks like, oh, that looks like you're really pinching. Um, it doesn't hurt. Three different spots in your body. We take uh, measurements. Those measurements go into track wrestling and the program um, auto calculates what your minimum weight can be. Okay. Now, for individuals that are really maybe trying to make it down to their lowest weight class, you need to be really, really close to that weight class on the day that we test. So on the days we test, we will typically keep the scale up in our stairwell until we get there. So you guys need to run up, get on the scale, see if you're there. You know, if you're not where you need to be, then don't test. Because once this test locks in, once we enter these numbers into track wrestling, um, it's impossible to change. You know, they do have a, um, a process to try to like retake tests and stuff like that. Any retakes we've done, I mean, in my, in my entire life, I've seen hundreds of retakes. Um, I have kids on my wrestling team that were retrying all the time and it's never turned around the results. I've never seen a result get turned around. Um, it's really, really tough to get that done. So um, mostly because whatever test you, whatever test results you enter first, whatever measurements in the first test, they like, they stick in any of the appeal process. So if you appeal and retry, like those numbers are still used. So whatever numbers we take first, um, they stay through the whole appeal process. So it's nearly impossible to get anything turned around. So point being, you have to be super prepared and at your weight class as much as you can be on that test day but then walking this fine line like you still have to be hydrated so if you're trying to lose weight too hard at the last second you're not going to be hydrated for the test okay um so overall diet okay i mean this should be true for all athletes hopefully you guys have learned a lot about athletes um you know diets and food that you should be eating so Here's some tips, I guess, on how you should be eating for an athlete. Like try the three C's, cut, chop, cook. In other words, like if you are using authentic foods, like real foods that you need to cut up, you need to put into a pan, you need to cook them, um, you're probably doing pretty good, right? And that's tough work. You have to sort of learn how to be a chef, but that is the best way to go about it. Water on top of water on top of water. You need to be hydrated, giving your muscles what they need, but as well your digestive system. If you eat a lot but don't follow it up with water, that stuff actually like sticks in your body a little bit and gets um, pulled into to uh, become fat more so. So we need water. It helps your body process all the foods you you need. Um, you should really also, excuse me, you should be limiting your Gatorade type drinks. So those um, thirst quenchers, those actually have a lot of stuff in there that can hurt your hydration. So you can't just pound Gatorade all day and then think that you're hydrated for practice or hydrated for an event. You actually by then will be dehydrated. You're overdoing your body with salts and sugars and it starts to suck the water out of your muscles. So be careful with that. Those drinks were made for in competition. Those drinks were made to recover from um, heavy activity, right? 
So a Gatorade or some of those drinks during a long tournament day, after a match, you drink a half of one, that would be the right time to do it because it's for recovery after heavy activity. Uh, but just drinking it throughout the day is not smart um, on a regular day, like a school day. That's not smart. Um, cut the energy drinks, cut the sodas. You know what I mean? Like take those trash drinks and get rid of them. You're not being an athlete if you're drinking those things. Um, and avoid pre-made processed foods. So, you know, all the things that are in the boxes, a lot of the frozen foods, like we should be avoiding those. Going back to the three C's, cut, chop, cook. You should be um, getting the vegetables, the whole meats. You should be cutting them, putting them together, cooking, you know, almost like think of like a stir fry without the rice. Like that's a really good meal. You have authentic meats, authentic vegetables, um, cutting them up, putting them together to eat. That's good. Good athlete diet. If you're actually trying to lose weight, okay, this is actually a really good schedule. Like this is what you should be doing. Um and I guess I should have uh, added in there too. I have cardio workout, but like I'm going to skate here for a second. Um, going through this schedule on the right side. Well, let me start over. So don't starve yourself. Like everyone thinks, okay, I need to lose weight. I'm just going to starve. Um, that does not help your body burn calories. So if you are, if you're trying to burn calories, you actually need to keep feeding your body progressively through the day, like little bits at a time. Um, what you will see in the schedule I have on the right side, like you're not actually eating any of the three giant meals that we're used to. Like the whole idea of having a big breakfast, big lunch, big dinner, like that is typically too much food for the body. And like that's one reason our culture has a hard time, you know, um, staying down on weight um, for the typical person um so let me add in here so on the schedule on the right side like a 5 a.m alarm i'm saying that because if you're truly losing weight or wanting to lose weight like you need some cardio before school it's it's definitely true um but when you get up let's say 5 a.m alarm um you're gonna chug water anybody that wakes up in the morning is usually dehydrated because you just went eight hours without a sip of water. If you sleep eight, eight hours, like you should. So you wake up, that should be one of the first things you do. And I can admit like water early in the morning doesn't sit the best with me, but I force myself to do it. Even though it doesn't feel that great. I know I need a lot of water. So you got to chug water when you wake up. Um, then you could have a light yogurt. You know, something small like that, not a massive breakfast, um, just something small. 6 a.m. cardio workout, like go get your sweat in, you know, get on the elliptical, get on the treadmill, run outside if it's safe to do so in the middle of winter. Um, then what you're going to see here, the point of this whole schedule is like about every two hours, I have something small that we're eating. Okay. I guess let me go back in. I'm not going to type anything. Um you have 7 a.m., like a fruit, right? A main fruit, like um, an orange, a banana, an apple. Um, water with that. 9 a.m., you're going to eat one of the two Nature Valley bars in a pack. 11 a.m., you get a string cheese and water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 1 p.m., you can have that second Nature Valley bar plus water. At 3 p.m., you have 10 crackers plus water. At 6 p.m., you can have a salad and water. Okay. At 8 p.m., you have a large water. You see water's all over this. But one point is you are spreading small parts of food throughout the entire day. So this is also a mental fix. You are convincing yourself that you are still eating all day long. Um, but you see nowhere in there does it say, like, eat a giant lunch. You know, eat a big breakfast. You know, if anything, that's 6 p.m., that, like, dinner, um, you could have a healthy dinner, like a salad. Okay, um, the chopped vegetables and, and meat, you know, that, that authentic um, um, chop, cut, chop, cook, you know, follow that for dinner. That's a good thing. Some other things possible, like anything small and healthy. Oops, a hard boiled egg, any fruits, peanut butter and celery, meal replacement shakes, a half a sandwich. Like just it's a small thing. Um, you probably want to calculate. You want to, a lot of people trying to lose weight, try to follow like a, a thousand calorie a day situation. 
okay? Lay out everything that you're going to eat throughout the next day. Um, see that it's like seven, eight things. You spread those out about every two hours. And that if you can add up all the calories, that it can be around 1,000 calories, and you would really start losing a lot of weight. Okay. You need a good event cooler. So, you know, a lot of the same things are on this list. So if we go to a duel, you should have a cooler because we're going to weigh in. You're going to eat a little bit, drink a little bit, and get ready to wrestle. We go to a tournament. You are there all day long, and their concession stand is, is um, excuse me, is going to be trash. So um, do not just bring money. You know what I mean? That's kind of a lazy way about it. Like, oh, I, I don't want to pack a cooler. That's a lot of work. So I'm just going to bring money. I'm going to go have, like, tacos to go at the uh, concession stand. Like, that's a terrible idea if you're competing. Okay. Um, so team events um, are duels. So, again, kind of for newer wrestlers, if you understand this, like, when we have a Tuesday or Thursday night, like, team event, um, everybody's coming along. So, like, if we're going to wrestle Campbell Sport, for example, everybody comes along because – if it works out perfectly, everybody can get a match. We do JV matches in front of the varsity matches. So um, if they have a lot of JV guys and we have a lot of JV guys and their weights match up, we run all of those matches, okay? And then we'll start varsity later on. Um, sometimes in our conference especially, like that's based on luck a little bit. A lot of teams don't have a lot of depth. Um, so the JV matches have been struggling lately, but we're still all coming along, okay, or being at our home event. Uh, tournaments, then, like I said earlier, we will determine um, what, your, uh, what you're signed up for ahead of time. So if a tournament's coming up, you know, if we have a tournament that Saturday, by like Monday, Tuesday, we're discussing who's all going to be in that tournament uh, what levels they're going to be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We need a cooler pack. Um, there are some JV specific tournaments. There's a lot of varsity specific tournaments. We'll be discussing that. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to collect money again this year. So after tournaments um, from your parent donations, we can get some meals after tournaments. Since I'll be driving the bus or even JV uh, tournaments, you guys have a different bus driver. I'll convince them to have you guys stop somewhere and, and use uh, my card to get some meals. Okay. Hygiene is very important for wrestling. So wrestling mats, um, you know, your clothing can start to get stuff in them and it can get into your skin. So uh, most commonly is uh, ringworm. I'll just jump ahead a slide here. So I think. Okay, we have ringworm on the left. In the middle is impentigo. On the right is like a staph infection, which basically is a small pimple that turns into a big, bad pimple. Um, these are all things we need to watch for on our skin. Um, but most importantly, we need to be showering immediately after practice. Okay, and I know for freshmen, that's odd. It's like, man, I've never really like jumped in a shower with my team before. Um, I would encourage you to get used to it. Like it's really weird and awkward at first. It's not comfortable. Um, your team will be pretty supportive in the situation because we don't want this stuff to show up on our team and start spreading around. If you're going to go home again, it's got to be from the car straight to the shower. Okay. One thing I know we all like to do when we get home is, okay, now it's time to relax and lounge around, eat dinner, you know, I'll, just, I'll shower before bed. Um, terrible idea. Okay. In, in moments, any of these things we're talking about is setting into your skin pores. It's building itself a home, so to speak. And uh, you need to not let that happen. So good shower materials. Um, there's a lot of soaps and creams out there that you're going to get used to. Um, I, in high school and still now, use sell some blue all the time. That's a dandruff shampoo, but it's um, selenium sulfide that is actually an antifungal and can help get ringworm off your skin. Um, Sulpri and defense soap, those are two different types of soaps that are made to um, defend um, fungal and uh, bacterial infections in your skin. Um, there's ringworm creams out there. You can find at any Walgreens or Walmart. If we have ringworm showing up, you got to get treating it immediately. 
and Abriva can actually help for most um, like herpes type things. Um, Impetigo is in that category. That is an actual like strand of uh, herpes infection. Um, and Abriva is made for cold sores, but it actually does a pretty good job on a lot of those. So one thing you got to do is kind of determine and coaches can help you too. If you have a spot showing up and you're like, not sure what it is. Is it ringworm? Is it impetigo? What is it? What are you going to put on it? Just show it to a coach and we can uh, determine most likely what it is and what you need to get on it right away. Um, if you do end up with any spots like this, uh, you do need a skin form in order to pass the skin checks and wrestle at an event. So you do not want to just try to like hide these. If we can get you a skin form, which you need to go to a doctor and they need to clear that it's been, um, that you've been treating it with the correct creams. Um, or if it's bad enough, sometimes they give you a medication and then they give you a skin form that you need to take. Okay. We will have the skin forms at my desk in the wrestling room. Um, you need to take a skin form to the doctor. They're going to fill it out a date that you can start, or maybe they're going to clear you right away. You know, typically for ringworm, they can clear you right away. If you've been saying like you've been putting this cream on it for two or three days, it'll get you cleared right away. Um, but then we need that skin form at the next weigh-ins because the refs will spin you in a circle, check your skin. Um, you do wear your wrestling singlet these days. So that kind of helps if it's something that's under your singlet, the ref isn't going to see it. But if it's on your arms, shoulders, upper back, you know, your calves, those things that are going to be out from a wrestling singlet, we do need that skin form. Okay. Um, all right, some gear that we're going to want on a daily basis. So I do want you guys to have your own jump rope. If your own jump rope is still upstairs, then good. You have that. Probably want to see if it's still there and not broken because everybody messes around up there all off season and probably broke half of our jump ropes so make sure you have a personal jump rope we want to bring those jump ropes along to events it helps warm-ups some events are very tight you can't like have anywhere to run or get your sweat up so jump roping in the corner helps um, your wrestling shoes obviously every day headgear every day and uh, tennis shoes something that's good in running especially before the snow falls we're going to try once or twice a week maybe just to get outside get our legs going get running um, you know maybe we'll bring the hill run back this year that was a fun gig for us um, you will be given a warm-up um, you'll get the top warm-up the wrestling singlet um, You'll get the backpack, okay? It says or fighter uniform, just reminding people that we still have uh, fight shorts and a compression top that is legal to wear. So if you don't want to wear a wrestling singlet, you will see some wrestlers out there wearing more of like a like a fighter look. So it's shorts and a compression top. Um, we do have those, so if you want one of those. Um, the warm-ups and stuff, do not wear that stuff at practice. Okay, um, when you, you know, typically every time we hand out uniforms and the next day, like everyone's in their, their, uh, you know, warm ups at practice and it's like, don't do that. It's not made for that. Um, you should have a fresh pair of clothes at every practice. Um, you know, I guess another thing is don't, don't reuse any clothes. That's another thing. Like people don't want to repack every single day. So like wearing the same shorts every day. Um, that's where those skin things can come from. So fresh clothes every single day. Um, on Wednesday nights, we're going to be helping the uh, KIWC again right after our practice. They don't start till December, though. So when December rolls around or Wednesday nights, we're going to start staying after. Um, I'm going to actually keep track of who stays around. So I want everybody to commit to a minimum of three nights. The captains are going to be there every night. That's a captain expectation that we're helping out our youth. So um, this can help us lead to KWC scholarships in the future. If you were a KWC member in the past, you can become a uh, um, scholarship winner when you are a graduating senior. Um, but again, I'm going to keep track of that. What we're expecting is that we can stay after. And again, we're not just going over to the crash mats to lay around for an hour. Like we, as a program and as a 
leadership perspective we're there to coach and help like those younger wrestlers are going to look up to you if we do a good job at that our program will continue to build and build and build okay it's really helped we did one year of this and our middle schoolers are more talented our middle schoolers are more pumped about being great wrestlers because they're training with our great varsity wrestlers okay so and that's not just varsity wrestlers so like jv guys too like let's try to aim at three nights throughout the season three wednesdays that we can stick around and help okay we use Matt Boss, so any returning wrestlers, you already have your accounts on here. New wrestlers, you will be getting an invite email in your school email, so pay attention for that. Um, any videos or any matches you have, we have managers running around with iPads at tournaments. They're going to record your matches. They're going to keep score of your matches, um, and you will hear the coaches. We'll see this year. Maybe they're... Um, Maybe adding notes to the video has become an easier process. Otherwise, that has been not working too well. Um, but you can definitely hear the coaches. They're usually sitting by a coach, so you can pay attention to what they're saying during your match and like learn really well that way. Uh, review your matches and come to practice with questions. Like That's the most important thing is that, again, taking ownership and what you need to improve on. Um, if there's something in the match that – Either the coach was yelling, you don't know what they were talking about, then come get the coach at practice or after practice and work on it. Um, bring it to practice and ask questions. Okay. All right, that's the end of our slideshow. Um, if we have, you know, we'll continue to reiterate this stuff as the season comes up and have any other questions, you can remind message me, you can email me. Um, you can just search roads in your email, it'll pop up. All righty, have a good one.